How do we design a cantilever slab? Young engineers always have this question. Here is yet another question from a student on a cantilever slab that he has encountered. How to support that? This is what we are going to discuss today. Hi all, this is Premjit here from civilera.com. Before getting into the question, let me request you to subscribe to this channel and also click on this bell icon to ensure that you get the alert on our new videos that will help you level up your skills for structures. So here is the question. Question. Hi sir, how do we design a 4 feet wide chajja from face of wall? There is a sketch which I think shows a column here, here, here. And I'm assuming that there is going to be a beam here and it's a frame structure. So if it is not, then we have to deal that as well. So here I'm not sure where the next column is going to be. So there should be a column somewhere so that there is a beam here. If it's not the case, then that is cantilevering from the wall. If there is a beam, then it is cantilevering from this particular beam. So I will currently consider that it is a frame structure and you have a peripheral beam like this and there is a column somewhere to support that beam and I will explain it based on that. I will also consider the other condition after this. So here it's pretty straightforward. All you need to do is that you need to design this as a cantilever. So whatever 1.2 that you have, you can decide your moments WL square by 2 and then design for that particular moment. Now if there are columns and the beams are connected to the columns, so in such a situation when there is a cantilever like this, this beam is subjected to a torsion because this moment is going to be imparted as a torsion or transferred as a torsion onto this beam because this torsional capacity of this beam is what will give support to your slab. At the end of the construction, that is, you have the lintel, which is connected to the columns in this case, and then you have the chajja, and you will build your wall on top of it, and then finally there is going to be a beam here coming from the roof, and this is your piece of wall on top of it. So once you erect this particular wall, and when it is tightly packed with the top slab, then probably there won't be much torsion on this because this wall is tightly packing that beams and hence will not create a torsion in this particular beam but still since it's a frame structure and you don't want to rely on these walls you can consider that torsion to be passed onto this particular beam and design this beam for the torsion when it is connected to the column. Now you can have a second case where whatever you have shown is a pier and there is no columns here and it's projecting from the wall. So if that is the case you have to take care of two things. One is that there won't be any torsion in this particular beam because that's an overturning. So since the ends are not restrained this will not be subjected to any torsion but then the fact is that it will roll over or it is instable until and unless this particular wall is constructed. So this is explained in my free course on stability which you might have done and most of you might have done most of my viewers might have done that if you have not done that you can go to course.civilera.com and get the free course i will pass the link to this course in the description you can go there and get the free course as well what i'm trying to say is that your construction sequence you will first finish off your foundations columns and your beams and the slabs. When you don't have columns in the project, when it is a load bearing structure, you would have finished your foundations and the walls. When you reach the lintel level, you are going to keep your formwork of this particular lintel in place. You should not be removing this particular support before you erect the wall on top and before you erect the entire structure and ensure that this is tightly packed. If you don't do this, what happens is your structure is not in equilibrium. What happens is that since this cantilever chajja is going to impart an overturning here, it will just roll over from the wall below because this is not connected to any column. If that's the case, if it is resting just on top of a wall, then this cantilever moment from the chajja is going to impart overturning. It's not stable, so it's not torsion. Even if you design this beam for torsion, it's not going to stand there because it's not torsion, it's overturning, it's not stable, it's not connected to a column, so it's not restrained, hence it will roll over and fall down. So you are required to take an extra care, that is you can remove this formwork only after the erection of the wall on top of this particular 
lintel beam whereas if you have connected this beam into a column then it is stable because it's restrained it's connected to the column and then it won't overturn you have to design this beam for torsion so two cases one with column and one without column coming back there are a few more things that you need to take care here one is if you don't have a beam here if it's a wall here and you have beam here and here then this piece you need to take care because that don't have a column if you don't have a column here and if there is no beam here then this piece this much length of the slab is supported on the wall and other things are supported on the beam which is connected to column so here you might not have the overturning or instability but then in this piece you are likely to have so you need to take care of that it can cantilever here in this manner that's a different thing altogether now second place where you need to take care is this corner because you have two slabs meeting so what you will have to probably do is ensure one supports the other so if i draw that here you have a slab like this in plan and up to here it is supported or up to here it is supported it's cantilevering it's cantilevering now this particular piece is not supported anywhere so what you have to do is you have to ensure that the distribution steel of one of the sides say for example if you are having the distribution steel in this direction should cantilever from these bars and it should be able to cantilever from here so this bars has to be designed as cantilever as well taking the load of the other either you design these bars for taking the load from this this piece only this piece and design the steel more or you can do this as a cantilever and support that or both you give the same steel so that site is not confused when you are detailing you also need to ensure that you have proper development length for the top bars so that it can transfer the load i have another blog on development length i will leave that in the comment or in the description as well and then you can read that to ensure that you have sufficient development length so this bar needs to be designed for wl square by 2 this should be the factored moment and that's all i wanted to tell you about this particular cantilever slab so i hope you like the video please like and subscribe to the channel ensure you share the video if you like it and please read the links in the description as well for full understanding so thank you very much for watching this video see you soon